morning from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where flight controllers belonging to the Orbit 1 team are preparing uh, for the arrival of the SpaceX Dragon cargo ship that is scheduled to dock to the International Outpost about one hour and 45 minutes from now, following its launch on Thursday from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Good morning and welcome to what amounts to a space doubleheader today as we kick off with the arrival of the SpaceX Dragon that is carrying some three tons of supplies and science experiments to the Expedition 70 crew aboard the International Space Station. Awaiting the arrival of Dragon is Station Commander Alek Kononenko of Roscosmos and his crewmates Nikolai Chub and Alexander Grabenkin of Roscosmos and NASA astronauts Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps and Laurel O'Hara. Also waiting in the wings, the second launch attempt for the Soyuz MS-25 half a world away at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with launch scheduled three hours and four minutes from now at, at 7.36 a.m. Central Time, 8.36 a.m. Eastern Time, which will be 5.36 p.m. in the Central Asian Desert. We'll be talking more about Soyuz as the morning goes on. We're coming up uh, very shortly, and there's our first view of the uh, SpaceX Dragon, currently uh, at a distance of about eight kilometers away from the International Space Station. It is preparing to fire its uh, Draco thrusters in uh, a big uh, rendezvous maneuver called the approach initiation burn that uh, will occur at a distance of about seven kilometers below and behind the International Space Station. That will result in Dragon making a long looping maneuver uh, to a point about uh, one kilometer directly below the station and then moving out in front of the station at a distance of about 220 meters and then above the station at a distance also of about 220 meters to begin its final approach for contact and capture to the zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. The uh, path of Dragon uh, from the launch pad to this point prior to docking has been precise, in fact so precise, that all the burns are coming up a bit earlier than had been planned. Docking is now scheduled for approximately 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. That would be just one hour and 20 minutes before the Soyuz launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The uh, Dragon cargo ship began its journey to the International Space Station on Thursday. Here's a replay of liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Lifting off into a cloudless sky on a majestic afternoon at the uh, Florida Spaceport, Falcon 9 rose to orbit, arced out to the northeast into an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, and about 11 minutes after launch, the Dragon itself separated from the second or upper stage of the Falcon 9 rocket into its preliminary orbit. The forward nose cap on the Dragon cargo craft uh, was opened to expose the docking mechanism that will come into play a bit later on this morning uh, as it arrives uh, at the Harmony module for its docking to the station. On board uh, the station, astronauts Mike Barrett and Laurel O'Hara will be in the station's cupola monitoring the approach of Dragon for its uh, docking to the complex, again carrying some three tons of supplies and science experiments for the Expedition 70 and 71 crews. Dragon will begin a stay on board the station of about five weeks in duration once it departs uh, around uh, the April 25th time frame. Uh, a couple of days later, the crew eight crew members, uh, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, and Jeanette Epps, along with Alexander Grabenkin, will uh, board their uh, Crew Dragon vehicle, the SpaceX Dragon that they launched on earlier this month, and will undock from the forward port of the Harmony module and do a brief uh, spin around the block to relocate themselves to the Zenith port. That's the port to which the Cargo Dragon is going to be docking uh, a bit later, about an hour and 40 minutes from now. Dragon's departure clears that port for the relocation of the Crew 8 
Dragon vehicle, in turn opening up the forward port of the Harmony module for the arrival in early May of the Boeing Starliner spacecraft with Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams aboard in the crew flight test of uh, that new uh, commercial crew vehicle. During uh, the final phase of the rendezvous by the Dragon cargo craft this morning, uh, there will be several points. If you can imagine the crosshairs uh, on a target, uh, the vertical line is called the R-bar, that's the radial vector, an imaginary line drawn between the International Space Station and the Earth. The horizontal line is called the velocity vector, that's called the V-bar, that's the direction of travel in which the station uh, makes its uh, orbit around the Earth. At the crosshairs of that uh, target is the International Space Station. So Dragon, again, will be moving uh, to a point directly below the station on the R-bar, or radial vector, then will move out uh, in a long looping maneuver in front of the station and then above the station uh, to a point uh, called Waypoint 1, uh, where uh, all of its systems will be uh, evaluated by the SpaceX flight control team in Hawthorne, California, uh, who are operating in concert with the flight control team here in Houston. And uh, then the terminal phase of the uh, approach inside the keepout sphere will begin uh, with various checkpoints uh, before uh, Dragon makes contact and capture to that zenith port of the Harmony module. And the approach initiation burn has now begun. This is a, a brief firing of the uh, Draco thrusters on Dragon. Uh, this is the final major maneuver, other than fine course, mid course uh, correction burns that will be coming up to fine tune and refine the path of Dragon to the International Space Station. And the burn is complete and good. And the trajectory, uh, all of the GPS equipment on Dragon now targeting a perfect arrival at the International Space Station. All of uh, the burns have gone flawlessly to this point, and Dragon's systems are in excellent shape. Again, uh, the approach initiation burn has just been conducted. Uh, no problems. It was a perfect burn. And so Dragon now is on its uh, final trajectory to arrive at a point directly below the station and then moving out in front of the station then above the station for contact to the zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module. At this hour, the International Space Station and its seven crew members are flying 262 miles over the South Atlantic moving from southwest and northeast in an orbit that will carry it across the southern coast of Africa and up the east coast of Africa on this orbit of the Earth. At the uh, SpaceX Control Center in Hawthorne, California, flight controllers are watching uh, over the progress of Dragon in the overnight hours on this Saturday morning, making sure that all of Dragon's systems are in excellent shape, which they are, as it uh, moves into the final phase of its approach for docking to the station about an hour and 36 minutes from now. Docking is scheduled at 6.16 a.m. Central Time 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. 
Here in the International Flight, uh, in the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center, again, the Orbit One team of flight controllers on duty. They are led this morning by Flight Director Ronak Dave, who is the lead flight director for this SpaceX resupply mission called CRS, or Commercial Resupply Mission 30, to the International Space Station. He is at the bottom of your screen. To his right is spacecraft communicator David Brenna, who will be talking to the expedition crew aboard the International Space Station as the morning uh, moves along. As Dragon continues uh, its flawless approach to the International Space Station in the Central Asian desert at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, the uh, Soyuz MS-25 crew is uh, about to board uh, the uh, vehicle for the second time in a couple of days. Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky joined by NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya are ready for their launch attempt coming up at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time this morning. This uh, launch attempt today comes two days after a last-second abort of the launch on Thursday, in which the countdown reached the T-minus 20-second mark before the ground launch sequencer cut off the countdown due to the detection of low voltage in the uh, electrical system of the Soyuz 2.1A booster's first stage. The engineers down at Baikonur uh, went through a series of troubleshooting procedures, changed out batteries in the Soyuz first stage, retested them, and everything is set to go this morning for a launch to the International Space Station. Unlike Thursday, which would have resulted in a fast-track, two-orbit, three-hour journey from the launch pad to the station, Today's launch, the orbital mechanics, is such that it will be a 34-orbit, two-day journey to the station with the crew in the descent module of the Soyuz capsule for about 48 hours with docking scheduled at 10.09 a.m. Central Time, 11.09 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday morning. This, in turn, uh, pushes uh, the departure of NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara with Novitsky and Vasilevskaya to return to Earth on their Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft. That uh, return to Earth now is targeted for April 6th. And uh, just a note, um, we will uh, be segueing almost immediately out of our Dragon docking coverage this morning into our launch coverage from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. That will begin uh, right at uh, the top of the hour at 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So you'll be uh, seeing uh, all of the activity associated with pre-launch uh, uh, events uh, preceding the crew's arrival at the launch pad. That launch coverage again coming up at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA Television and NASA Plus. Dragon's approach to the International Space Station will pass uh, several gate uh, posts, if you will. Uh, there's a large uh, elliptical oval-shaped uh, region called the Approach Ellipsoid that uh, the Dragon cargo craft, the unpiloted cargo craft, will enter a short time from now at a distance of about one kilometer below the station. Once inside the Approach Ellipsoid, integrated operations uh, will be underway between the flight controllers at SpaceX's control center in Hawthorne and the flight control team here in Houston. The inner circle, if you will, which is basically the neighborhood of the International Space Station, if you wish to call it that, is called the keep-out sphere. That's uh, where the uh, Dragon spacecraft will begin the terminal phase of its approach uh, for rendezvous and docking. 
a slow glacial methodical approach that will start about 220 meters above the Harmony module's zenith docking port uh, all the way into contact and capture. The uh, Dragon cargo craft now about four kilometers away from the International Space Station. We're about uh, 16 minutes away from a uh, mid-course burn of the Draco thrusters. Again, this is a very small tweak uh, of the uh, Draco uh, engines that will uh, fine-tune Dragon's path to the International Space Station, all automated. The uh, cargo vehicle, unpiloted, should reach uh, a distance of about 1,000 meters away from the International Space Station some 21 minutes from now. Aboard uh, the International Space Station, which is currently flying over South Africa, NASA astronauts Mike Barrett and Laura O'Hara will be uh, inside the cupola a short time from now, setting up uh, all of their rendezvous tools and monitoring equipment uh, to keep an eye on uh, the approach of Dragon uh, for its uh, contact and capture to the uh, zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module. Once that is complete, an umbilical will be extended between uh, Dragon and uh, Harmony, and uh, that will be hooked up to provide uh, station power to Dragon for the duration of its five-week stay at the International Outpost. Once uh, pressure checks and leak checks are conducted uh, at the docking interface between Dragon and the station, uh, the hatch uh, will be opened on the station side of the docking interface, and then the Dragon hatch uh, will be open uh, to about uh, 9, 10 o'clock this morning central time to allow the uh, station crew on this Saturday to do a bit of heavy lifting as they move precious cargo and science experiments out of Dragon into the station to set up shop for their five weeks of uh, scientific research. As we said, uh, we're keeping track on two uh, critical activities today. While Dragon is approaching the station for its docking, uh, this photo from Bill Ingalls, NASA chief photographer, uh, who's in Kazakhstan in Baikonur, shows uh, the Soyuz MS-25 crew, Tracy Dyson on the left, Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander in the center, and 
Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya on the right as they were prepared to board a bus in front of their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters uh, a short time ago. They made their way to uh, the suit-up facility in the Baikonur Cosmodrome, suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, and then were driven to Pad 6 at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, where they have just pulled up ready to board uh, their vehicle for final pre-launch preparations. The vehicle currently being fueled for launch at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. Back here in uh, Mission Control in Houston, uh, flight controllers are working with their SpaceX counterparts in Hawthorne, California, monitoring uh, the precise path of the Dragon cargo craft for its docking to the International Space Station, all of its systems in good shape. Currently 3.4 kilometers distance between uh, Dragon and uh, the Harmony module of the International Space Station, which is its destination today, closing at a rate of about three and a half meters per second. The next milestone will be a brief uh, firing of the Draco thrusters uh, in what is called a mid-course correction burn, a fine tuning burn to refine uh, the Dragon's path to the station. That should be coming up about 11 and a half minutes from now. If you're just joining us, uh, we are providing live coverage of the uh, SpaceX Dragon cargo ship's arrival at the International Space Station. Also uh, preparing uh, for our live coverage of the launch of Soyuz MS-25 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Dragon is currently uh, three kilometers away from the station in a phasing uh, coast that will take it uh, to a point called Waypoint Zero inside the approach ellipsoid, a large uh, elliptical or oval-shaped uh, region around the International Space Station. We should be about uh, 30 minutes away from a point at which Dragon would be 400 meters directly below the station along the R-bar, or the radial vector to the Earth, an imaginary line that's drawn between the space station itself and the Earth. And as we uh, track uh, the progress of Dragon to the station, another picture from NASA Chief Photographer Bill Ingalls uh, showing Tracy Dyson, NASA astronaut, about to embark on her third flight into space as uh, she uh, underwent uh, the pressure checks, the leak checks on her Sokol launch and entry suit inside the uh, 
Building 254 integration facility at the Baikonur Cosmodrome before the crew, uh, which includes Dyson, Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky, and spaceflight participant from Belarus, uh, Marina Vasilevskaya, were driven uh, by bus out to the launch pad. The crew has now boarded the Soyuz MS-25 with the countdown now at T-minus two hours and 40 minutes until their launch. This is Mission Control Houston. We're in a, a brief uh, loss of signal through our tracking and data relay satellite system. At this hour, uh, the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft is on a precise path for a docking to the International Space Station about an hour and 18 minutes from now. Docking is scheduled a bit earlier than uh, previously scheduled. The current uh, docking time, approximately 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Everything going uh, by the book so far with Dragon's approach to the station, now at a distance of about 2.3 kilometers away, closing at a rate of about 2.5 uh, meters per second. The next uh, milestone coming up in about nine and a half minutes, that will be a brief firing of the Draco thrusters in a mid-course correction burn to uh, more precisely fine-tune Dragon's path into the uh, approach ellipsoid and then ultimately into the keep-out sphere for a long looping maneuver to uh, a point about 220 meters above the station for its final approach for contact and capture. Dragon, as we mentioned, is carrying uh, some three tons of supplies and science experiments to the station. Science, of course, the major objective of activities aboard the International Space Station. Following uh, the launch of the 30th commercial resupply mission on Dragon uh, to the station on Thursday, the uh, science experiments and technology demonstrations on their way for arrival at the complex include studies of sea ice thickness, photosynthesis in space, and nanoparticle arrangements in quantum dot solar cells. The uh, SpaceX Dragon is delivering a new set of sensors for the Astro B ro robots on board the station that uh, will support automated 3D sensing, mapping, and situational awareness functions. These systems could support future gateway and lunar surface missions by providing automated maintenance and service uh, scanning using rovers uh, to be launched uh, to the lunar surface as part of the uh, Artemis program. Additionally, the spacecraft will deliver a small satellite called Burst Cube that is designed to study gamma ray bursts that occur when two neutron stars collide. This satellite could help increase our coverage of the gamma ray sky, improving uh, our chances of studying bursts both with light and gravitational waves or ripples in space-time that would be detected by ground-based observatories. Finally, SpaceX, uh, the Dragon cargo craft, is delivering sample hardware for an initiative called GEARS that will test different locations of the space station for antibiotic-resistant microbes. 
The in-flight gene sequencing could show how these bacteria adapt to the space environment, providing knowledge that informs measures to protect astronauts for future long-duration missions.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're just a few minutes away from reacquiring a downlink television signal from the International Space Station. We're in a gap uh, between satellites in our tracking and data relay satellite system at the moment. As uh, was heard on the loops, uh, the uh, mid-course correction burn by Dragon's Draco thrusters uh, was conducted. Essentially a small tweak uh, to fine tune uh, Dragon's path to the International Space Station. We should be arriving at a point about a thousand meters directly below the station in some five minutes. Dragon's path is spot on for an expected uh, docking to the zenith or space facing port of the Harmony module at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Once uh, Dragon makes contact and capture to the uh, docking mechanism on the uh, zenith port of the Harmony module, a series of uh, 12 hooks will close to form a hard mate between Dragon and the station. An umbilical will be extended uh, to hook up to the station's power system so that Dragon can draw station power for the duration of its five weeks uh, delivering uh, some three tons of science equipment and supplies to the expedition crew on board the station. That expedition crew awaiting the arrival of Dragon this morning is uh, led by uh, Station Commander Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos along with his Roscosmos crewmates Nikolai Chub and Alexander Grabenkin along with NASA astronauts Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps and Laurel O'Hara. Barrett and O'Hara are going to be in the cupola a short time from now to uh, have their tools and monitoring equipment set up so that they can keep a close watch and close tabs on Dragon's approach for its docking to the Harmony module's zenith port. Once leak checks are conducted later this morning, the, the hatches uh, between the two vehicles, Dragon and the station, will be open and uh, cargo unloading will commence that will occupy most of the day on Saturday for the uh, crew members on board the International Space Station.
We're about to come uh, AOS, acquisition of signal on our tracking and data relay satellite system. Dragon uh, continues uh, its course toward the complex. Now just uh, 800 meters away from uh, the International Space Station where it will uh, move uh, to a point directly below the station, then in front of the station, then above the complex inside the so-called keep-out sphere to begin its final approach for contact and capture to the Zenith docking port on the space-facing side of the Harmony module. All of the rendezvous burns for Dragon have been uh, on the money. No issues. All of the Dragon systems in great shape being monitored by uh, SpaceX flight controllers in Hawthorne, California, as well as uh, the team here in Mission Control in Houston. Down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, we are now two hours and 24 minutes until the launch of Soyuz MS-25. This photo just received from NASA Chief Photographer Bill Ingalls showing uh, the crew at the launch pad on the stairs about to board uh, their vehicle. Uh, from top to bottom, Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya, NASA's Tracy Dyson, and at the bottom, Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky. The crew uh, is now strapped into their seats in the descent module of uh, the Soyuz MS-25, the vehicle, the Soyuz 2.1A booster, is fully fueled. This second launch attempt coming two days after the countdown was halted at the T-minus 22nd mark by the automated launch sequencer when an issue of low voltage was detected in uh, the electrical system of the booster's first stage. The crew was never in any danger at that time on Thursday. Uh, they were extracted from the vehicle after the countdown and the launch attempt was scrubbed for the day. They were uh, taken back to their uh, Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters where they have brushed up on some training and uh, preparing for today's second launch attempt. Once we complete our SpaceX docking coverage this morning, we will segue at uh, 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time into our launch coverage from Baikonur with launch scheduled at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, there's our view of our cargo ship, uh, the SpaceX Dragon that is currently now 600 meters uh, below the International Space Station, moving into the approach ellipsoid for uh, its uh, looping turn, if you will, around a racetrack pattern uh, called the keep-out sphere. Soon it will reach a point 400 meters directly below the station along the radial vector, or the R-bar, then in front of the station along the direction of travel of the station called the velocity vector. Dragon uh, on automated approach will move to a position directly above the station to a point called Waypoint 1 for the uh, final approach and docking to the zenith or face space facing port of the Harmony module. The International Space Station is currently flying 262 miles over the border between India and China. About to begin a northwest to southeasterly swing on this orbit of the Earth in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. SpaceX uh, flight controllers in Hawthorne telling flight director Ronak Dave here in Mission Control that uh, Dragon is go to move uh, toward waypoint zero and to pass waypoint zero, which is the point 400 meters directly below the station, and begin its looping turn. That will uh, basically be clockwise if you were looking at a clock to reach a point directly above the station for final approach.
flying 262 miles over China, the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft about to move into an orbital sunset as it continues uh, its flawless approach for a docking to the International Space Station at about 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. A good view of uh, Dragon, now just uh, 430 meters away from the International Space Station. Inside the approach ellipsoid, about to make its loop uh, to a point some 220 meters directly above the station, with docking scheduled about 55 minutes from now. Dragon has executed all of its rendezvous burns in excellent shape, initially raising its altitude following its launch on Thursday from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, raising its orbit uh, in a stair-step approach to uh, match that of the International Space Station, and then refining its course toward the station, all the burns automated, and all have been executed in flawless fashion. Once again, a great view of uh, the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft carrying some three tons of supplies and science experiments for the Expedition 70 and soon 71 crews on board the station. The uh, seven crew members on board the complex, Oleg Kononenko, Nikolai Chub, Alexander Grabenkin, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Laurel O'Hara are waiting uh, for the arrival of SpaceX. The NASA crew members will be unloading SpaceX cargo later today after uh, the Dragon's hatches open. That will come shortly after leak checks are conducted and the hatches are open between the Dragon and the International Space Station.
This is Mission Control Houston. The Cargo Dragon uh, is approaching uh, the 220 meter mark away from the International Space Station as it continues uh, its on target approach for a docking to the Zenith Port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station that is scheduled for about 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. You can see uh, the uh, flashing strobe light on the forward portion of the Dragon cargo craft as it continues its approach to a point some 200 meters above the International Space Station. The crew has reported uh, that it has a good visual sighting of Dragon. Currently flying uh, in an orbital uh, sunset, about to move off the coast of China and move uh, in from northwest to southeast across the Pacific Ocean. This is Mission Control Houston, again a view uh, over the uh, northwest uh, Pacific Ocean of the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft as it continues its approach to the International Space Station about to reach what is called Waypoint 1, a position about 220 meters directly above the station where it will initiate its final approach for an anticipated docking at about 6.16 a.m. Central Time 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time to the Zenith or Space Facing Port of the station's Harmony Module. While Dragon uh, is in the home stretch of its two-day journey from uh, its launch at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida on Thursday to a docking to the station this morning, 
down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson, Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos, and spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus are suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, strapped into their seats in the descent module of the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft, ready for a second launch attempt today, just two hours and four minutes from now. The Soyuz 2.1A booster is fully fueled, ready for launch at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. The countdown, uh, once again on Thursday for the initial launch attempt, was halted at the T minus 20 second mark by the ground launch sequencer at pad uh, 6, site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome when a low voltage reading was detected in the electrical system of the booster's first stage. Batteries were changed out and retested on Friday, and everything is set to go to send uh, Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya on a two day journey, a 34 orbit journey, based on the orbital mechanics available today and a docking to the International Space Station's Prishal module on Monday morning at 10.09 a.m. Central Time, 11.09 a.m. Eastern Time. We will begin our launch coverage from uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, following the Dragon docking to the International Space Station.
is actually connected to air quality monitor power supply 1003, which is connected to switch 3 on the PS120. And Matt, that's a good feedback on the power. That. Air No, I understand. I'm showing for procedure step two, serial number 1015, connected to power supply 1002 for the procedure, not 1003. And uh, Matt, that's that's a firm. So we'll make sure we correct that. Okay. Well, so one double oh six air quality monitor one double oh six is running off of serial number one oh one double oh two. So the the power supplies are swapped. So just to say, I want everybody clear, air quality monitor one double oh six. Is connected to 1002 and air quality monitor 1015 is connected to power supply 1003. Okay, Matt, we copy all and appreciate that info and we'll make sure our stuff is updated. Copy. I mean, maybe I'm being way too detailed here. You tell me. No, Matt, that's good. It helps us keep our products up to date. We appreciate the report. This is Mission Control Houston. We're about uh, 35 minutes or so away from uh, the expected docking of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon to the International Space Station. The expected docking time, approximately 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. SpaceX uh, and its Dragon craft, with uh, all of the Dragon systems being monitored by SpaceX flight controllers in Hawthorne, California, and the team here in Mission Control at the International Space Station Flight Control Room, also monitoring Dragon's approach and space station systems and uh, the level of station readiness to accept the Dragon for its docking to the zenith or space facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station just about uh, 35 minutes from now. We're about uh, 21 minutes away 
from uh, the point at which Dragon will be directly above the station at a distance of some 220 meters. That's called Waypoint 1. A brief opportunity for the alignment of Dragon to the Harmony module to be assessed by the SpaceX team in Hawthorne uh, before the command is given to begin a final approach to Waypoint 2 and a distance of just 20 meters away from the station. And then the final go for docking, which means contact and capture, initiating the hooks, the 12 hooks that will permanently latch Dragon to the station's Harmony module for the next five weeks of its cargo delivery and scientific experiment delivery activity. Dragon and the station are flying from northwest to southeast across the Pacific Ocean at an altitude of about 260 statute miles. We're one hour 53 minutes away from the launch of the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft with NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson, Roscosmos Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya, the spaceflight participant from Belarus. They are aboard uh, their Soyuz spacecraft at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The vehicle is fully fueled. The countdown is proceeding without a hitch toward an expected liftoff time of 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time, sending Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya on a 34-orbit, two-day journey to the International Space Station for a docking to the Prashal module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, docking on Monday, scheduled at 10.09 a.m. Central Time, 11.09 a.m. Eastern Time. When we are complete with our Dragon docking coverage this morning, we'll take a quick pause and then resume our Soyuz launch coverage on this doubleheader day at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA television. A view uh, over the uh, Pacific Ocean of the uh, Dragon cargo craft and its flashing lights visible to the Expedition 70 crew on board the International Space Station. We're about uh, 16 minutes or so away from uh, the Dragon arrival at uh, what is called Waypoint 1. That's a gate post basically uh, 220 meters directly above the International Space Station. 
All of the rendezvous burns have been executed uh, without incident. Everything in excellent shape on the Dragon as it uh, closes in for contact and capture to the Harmony Module's Zenith docking port. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, you're looking at a view in darkness of the uh, flashing lights on the SpaceX Dragon cargo ship launched uh, from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station two days ago. Now in the final uh, stages of its approach for a docking to the International Space Station at about 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time to deliver some three tons of supplies and science experiments to the Expedition 70 and soon Expedition 71 crews. We are just uh, a couple of minutes away from uh, Dragon's arrival at what is called Waypoint One. That is a milestone of about uh, 220 meters in distance above the International Space Station along what is called the R-bar, the radial vector an imaginary line drawn between uh, the station and the center of the Earth. We're about 26 minutes away from expected docking. Once uh, the docking occurs, a series of uh, hooks, 12 in all, will close in gangs of six each. That will form a hard mate between Dragon and the station's harmony module setting the stage for leak checks at the docking interface that will be conducted by the station crew members prior to the opening of the hatch uh, between the station and Dragon and then the Dragon hatch itself later this morning, allowing uh, the crew members to begin uh, unloading the most uh, time-critical cargo and the science equipment that will be set up uh, for about five weeks of science data gathering. Meanwhile, down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, countdown clocks also ticking toward the launch of the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft one hour, 45 minutes from now. That will send uh, NASA's Tracy Dyson 
Roscosmos Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya into uh, the beginning of a two-day journey to reach the International Space Station and a docking to the station's Prushal module on Monday morning. The second launch attempt that's coming up uh, follows a last-second scrub of Thursday's initial launch attempt due to the detection of a low voltage reading in the electrical system of the Soyuz 2.1A booster's electrical system. Batteries in that system were changed out on Friday and retested, and everything is set to go with the vehicle now fully fueled and the crew strapped into their seats in the descent module, the center section of the three-section Soyuz vehicle. We'll transition out of Dragon docking coverage into Soyuz launch coverage at 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Station Houston on space to ground two. Houston is go for Dragon to approach to waypoint two. Station copies go. You heard uh, the voice of spacecraft communicator David Brenna here in Mission Control in Houston and the acknowledgement by NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara aboard the International Space Station that Dragon has been given the go from the mission director at Hawthorne, California for SpaceX and uh, concurred by Flight Director Ronak Dave here in Mission Control to enable Dragon to approach inside the keep-out sphere to a distance of about 20 meters away from the International Space Station that should be occurring a short time from now.
This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, SpaceX Dragon cargo craft now less than 300 meters away from the International Space Station, having given a go uh, for approach to what is called Waypoint 2. That's a uh, intermediary stoppage point, uh, putting the brakes on basically for a final evaluation of its systems at a distance of about 20 meters or so away from the station before uh, the go is given uh, for final approach for contact and capture. We are about to enter into an orbital sunrise for Dragon and the International Space Station over the uh, South Pacific as uh, the two craft uh, will make their way from northwest to southeast crossing the southern coast of Chile. Air quality monitor in 6.5. With you on two, Matt, we copy. For situational awareness, the expected docking time for Dragon to the Harmony Module's Zenith, or space-facing docking port, uh, will come about one hour and 20 minutes before the scheduled launch of Soyuz MS-25 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome as uh, a flurry of activity is uh, unfolding here in Mission Control in Houston, the SpaceX Control Center in Hawthorne, California, the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow, and the focus of attention after Dragon this morning at the launch pad with Launch Pad 6, Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. And uh, as we move into an orbital sunrise, a better view now of uh, the strobe lights on the forward portion of the Dragon cargo craft, slowly but surely making its way uh, toward the uh, beginning of its terminal phase of its rendezvous. Everything, all of the burns from the Draco thrusters have uh, been automated and have been executed in excellent fashion. You can see uh, just off to the side of Dragon, that's the open nose cap that uh, was commanded open some 13 minutes after Dragon's launch atop its Falcon 9 rocket from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Thursday. The opening of the nose cap exposing the docking mechanism on the forward port of Dragon, as you can see, uh, is closing in on the space station. This view now of uh, the same perspective that uh, Laurel O'Hara and Mike Barrett are seeing on their monitors inside the cupola as they monitor the approach of Dragon in the final uh, moments before docking, which is scheduled some 15 minutes from now. We expect to reach uh, waypoint one. That's the point of a distance of about 220 meters between Dragon and the station, directly above the station. That's coming up about 10 seconds from now.
And Dragon now is passing waypoint one into the keepout sphere. Again, there are two imaginary uh, boundaries, if you will. One is the approach ellipsoid. That's a oval-shaped uh, area around the International Space Station. The second, a circular area called uh, the keepout sphere, essentially uh, the point of uh, the terminal phase of the rendezvous that brings a dragon towards its destination today, the zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module. And there uh, you see uh, the pre-programmed thruster firings on Dragon as it precisely aligns itself with the Harmony docking port. The Crew-8 Dragon that uh, brought uh, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps and Alexander Grabenkin to the station earlier this month is docked to the forward docking port of Harmony. Once uh, the SpaceX cargo Dragon craft departs uh, the Zenith port to which it's arriving this morning, once it departs that Zenith port about five weeks from now, Crew-8 will climb into its Dragon vehicle and do a relocation undocking from the forward port of Harmony, redocking to the same Zenith port that the Cargo Dragon is going to this morning. That opens up the forward port of Harmony for the arrival in early May of the Boeing Starliner uh, crew commercial craft that will uh, bring on the crew flight test or CFT mission astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams on the first crewed test flight of the new Boeing Starliner vehicle. As we continue to watch uh, Dragon approaching the International Space Station, thruster firings uh, again automatically programmed. Uh, as Dragon fine tunes its path to the station, we're continuing uh, to receive updates from the launch pad at Baikonur. The uh, three Soyuz MS 25 crew members, Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya, are conducting leak checks on their Sokol launch and entry suits inside the descent module. The Soyuz 2.1A booster fully fueled ready for launch one and a half hours from now. And back with you on two Laurel. At waypoint two, Dragon will briefly pause to align for docking, then automatically resume approach. Copy, brief pause at waypoint two. Laurel O'Hara acknowledging the call from spacecraft communicator David Brenna here in Mission Control. As uh, is planned, the uh, Dragon cargo ship will uh, put the brakes on for just a brief period of uh, station keeping at what is called Waypoint 2, a distance of just 20 meters uh, from the docking port on the space-facing side of Harmony. Once uh, those diagnostics are complete, then uh, the go will be given for final approach and uh, docking. Station Houston on two for Matt. Here in Mission Control, Flight Director Ronak Dave will uh, be polling his team of flight controllers to get a go for uh, approach to Waypoint 2. A good view of Dragon, its nose cap open on automated approach for a docking that is scheduled at about 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time, some nine minutes from now.
flight controllers uh, at Hawthorne, California for SpaceX report the Dragon's systems are now configured for docking. Dragon uh, now on final approach, crossing the 100 meter mark. All of Dragon systems in excellent shape. A final pull being taken here in mission control for a go for docking. All the uh, flight control positions here in Mission Control have pulled go for docking. Dragon now 80 meters away. Once again, the view you're seeing is the same view that Mike Barrett and Laurel O'Hara are privy to in the cupola as they monitor Dragon's final approach for contact and capture that is scheduled about eight minutes from now, about five minutes actually from now. Dragon and the International Space Station now flying some 262 statute miles over the South Atlantic, about to begin a southwest and northeasterly swing that will carry it across the west coast of Africa a short time from now. Now approaching 50 meters, We're in a momentary handover between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll get back uh, the video signal here shortly. Houston Station on two for our pop. With you on two, go ahead. Uh, we're seeing on uh, our pop on SSC 16 that we're getting ranges from node 2 forward DP to visiting vehicle DP. The corridor is showing good though. Laurel, we copy. We're going to have Pluto fix it from here. Dragon now 30 meters away.
Dragon now approaching uh, the final gate called Waypoint 2. Right before docking, uh, you'll hear a call, the CHOP call. That's the acronym for Crew Hands-Off Point, where the crew no longer will have the capability to issue an abort command in the unlikely event a last-second technical issue would crop up. And Station Houston on two for Laurel. We think it'll be faster if you do it yourself, and you can do that by pressing Control F8. You'll have to keep cycling through until you get what you want. We are all. Station Houston on Space Ground 2. Dragon is on final approach and is go for docking. Monitor per steps 5 and 6 and 1.102. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Copy go for docking. We're in step 5. We see range at 17 meters. Attitude as expected. We copy. Good words. Laurel O'Hara acknowledging a distance of about 17 meters separating Dragon from station. We're about three minutes away from contact and capture. You're looking right down the barrel of the uh, Zenith or space facing docking port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station where the Dragon cargo ship will spend the next five weeks. Eleven meters away. Dragon very stable, nominal rates reported. Moving inside the 10 meter mark. Seven meters now, separating Dragon and the space station. Crew is standing by. Five meters now. Good orientation by Dragon, very stable. Two meters away, standing by for contact and capture. Crew is now hands off, no abort commands capable anymore.
And we have contact and capture, soft capture complete at 6.19 a.m. Central Time, 7.19 a.m. Eastern Time, as Dragon and the space station flew 262 miles over the South Atlantic, just west of Africa. Once again, now uh, we're waiting for a relative motion between the two vehicles to dampen out before the initiation of the 12 hooks on Dragon that uh, will form a hard mate between itself and uh, the International Space Station. The docking ring retraction is now in progress. That basically pulls the two vehicles tightly together. Once again, docking occurring at 6.19 a.m. Central Time, 7.19 a.m. Eastern Time, as uh, the International Space Station and the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft flew over the South Atlantic just west of Africa. The uh, Dragon cargo craft completing a textbook two-day journey following its launch on Thursday afternoon from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Two uh, Dragons now at the station. This cargo Dragon at the Zenith or Space Facing Port, the Crew-8 Dragon, that brought uh, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps, and Alexander Grabenkin to the station earlier this month at the forward port of Harmony. We are uh, standing by for the initiation of the hooks on Dragon to begin to close two gangs of six hooks apiece that will form a hard mate between Dragon and the station. Then an umbilical is extended that uh, provides power between the station and uh, Dragon so Dragon can draw station power for the duration of its five week stay on board. We now have a good alignment between Dragon and the international docking adapter to which Dragon linked up to just a couple of minutes ago. And while we're standing by for the initiation of the hooks to close, just a note, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, we're one hour, 12 minutes away from the launch of Soyuz MS-25. The crew is on board, the vehicle is fully fueled, ready for launch at 7.36 a.m. Central Time, 8.36 a.m. Eastern Time. Launch coverage will begin at the top of the hour on NASA Television and NASA Plus at 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern.
Station Houston, MCS configured, proceeding with hook driving. Copy. And that call from spacecraft communicator David Brenna here in Mission Control to Laurel O'Hara indicates that uh, we should be seeing the initiation of the hooks driving on Dragon to form a hard mate between itself and uh, the ISS a short time from now. The first set of hooks now driving. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, we're waiting for the completion of the driving of the hooks to form a hard mate between uh, the newly arrived Dragon cargo craft, which linked up to the International Space Station's Harmony module, the Zenith or Space Facing Port, about 10 minutes ago at 6.19 a.m. Central Time, 7.19 a.m. Eastern Time. And we're now hearing that the second set of hooks are now driving and engaging. Station Houston on Space to Ground 2, hard capture complete. 
and we have a hard mate. Copies, hard capture complete. Congratulations to NASA and SpaceX. It was a beautiful approach and docking from up here. We're looking forward to getting into Dragon and getting going on all the research on board. And also finding all the goodies too. Hey, thanks so much for the words, Laura. We really appreciate it. This is Mission Control Houston. You heard the uh, confirmation of hooks closed, forming a hard mate between Dragon and the Harmony Module's Zenith International Docking Adapter. So uh, the cargo vehicle carrying three tons of supplies and science equipment to the station, now firmly in place, an umbilical is being uh, attached uh, between Dragon and the station so Dragon can receive station power. Meanwhile, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, you're looking live at the Soyuz MS-25 on the launch pad. It's pad 6, Site 31 at the Central Asian Spaceport. As the countdown is past the T-minus one hour, five minute mark, on board uh, the descent module, encapsulated in the upper stage of uh, the Soyuz booster, are NASA's Tracy Dyson, Roscosmos Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky and Belarus Spaceflight Participant Marina Vasilevskaya. They are ready to uh, launch at 7.36 a.m. Central Time, 8.36 a.m. Eastern Time on a two-day journey to reach the International Space Station. Our coverage will begin at the top of the hour at 7 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. This is Mission Control Houston, docking now confirmed and complete with the uh, extension and attachment of the umbilical between the station and uh, the Dragon cargo craft that uh, linked up to the Harmony module at 6.19 a.m. Central Time, 7.19 a.m. Eastern Time. It was a uh, perfect two-day journey from its launch at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Thursday to its arrival on the station today for a five-week delivery mission. So with that, we'll wrap up our coverage temporarily here from Mission Control. We'll be back on the air in just 27 minutes at uh, the top of the hour with our Soyuz launch coverage, sending another crew to the International Space Station. In the meantime, this is Mission Control Houston.